Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can take two singly linked lists and sum both of the lists together. So for instance, let me take an example here. We have two linked list objects that I've created right here. So I call them L list one. And basically what we have is we have the elements five, six, and three appended to the list in that order. And so this linked list is going to represent the number 365. And the reason it's doing that is because as we're appending the numbers to the list, the first element that we append is the least significant digit of the number. So for instance, this is in the ones place, this is in the tens place, and this is in the hundreds place. So this list is representing the number 365. We can read it backwards like that. So we also have a second list, which we'll call L list two. And this is representing the number 248, because again, we have the first element that we're appending to the list in the ones place, the second element in the tens place, and the third in the hundreds place. So we would keep going if we were to add more uh, numbers to this list. So basically what we want to do is we want to take both of these linked lists, which we'll consider representing a number. And what we want to do is something similar to printing out the sum of the numbers represented by these lists. So what we want to do is we want to actually construct the sum and we want to store that into a linked list, which has a similar form, namely the, um, the least significant digit of that sum should be the first element. And we'll keep going as we get higher and higher, um, orders of digits as we as we add them. So for instance, this sum here is, six, is 613. So the way that we would represent that list would be 316 in the similar way that these are kind of flipped. So I have a function here that I've called sum two lists, which operates on two linked lists, in this case, L list one and L list two. And it's going to return the sum of those lists as another linked list. So in order to figure out how to do this using two linked lists, let's actually just think about these two numbers, how we go about adding them uh, using the standard grade school method that you've probably learned from quite a while ago. So I've written out the numbers here, again, 365 and 248, just for uh, an example. And what we would do in the standard method of adding these two numbers is we would just start off at the least significant digit. So in this case, the ones place and we would add these two numbers and then we would put down the sum of these numbers down here. So in this case, we actually have a carry, which, which we have five plus eight is equal to 13. So we put down in this case, three here and carry the one from that 10 over to the second column. So then what we have is six plus four, which is 10 remembering to keep into account that carry. So we actually have 11. So here we would have the number one and then that other one from the 11 gets carried over into the last column here. So we have three plus two plus one from that carry and that will give us six. So in this case we have uh, six, 13 and the way that we're going to perform this using linked lists is sort of similar to how we did that. So how do we do that? Well, what we did is we have these numbers again stored as linked lists. So both of these are represented by two distinct linked lists. And when we're on the five, the least significant digit in the first list here, we're on this five, Set likewise for the second list, we have this eight character here, this eight number. And basically these represent the respective heads of the two linked lists. So what we can do is we can set a pointer, let's call it P to point to the head of the first linked list and Q to point to the head of the second linked list. And we'll move both of those pointers along in their respective lists while keeping track of the sum between the numbers that we are on. And then also whether or not there's a carry in that case. So for instance, we would sum these two, we would check if there's a carry, add that along if so. And then what we would do is we'd put that number down and then we would carry on the carry onto the next addition in the linked list. So we would move on the nodes respectively in each of their lists and then perform a similar operation until we got to the end of, of the lists. So that's go going to be kind of the pattern that we're going to use in this example here. So let's actually step through that. And as I step through that, I'll print things out periodically to hopefully um, make the process a little bit more transparent in terms of what's going on. So let's go ahead and get rid of this pass. So the first step again is we're going to set two pointers, P and Q, initially equal to the head of the respective lists. So P will be pointing to this one, Q will be pointing to this one. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have P is equal to self.head, which is passed in as one of the parameters. And then also Q is equal to the L list 
dot head, the list that we're actually passing in. So they're initially equal to the respective heads of those two lists. And we're also going to define, let's say, some list, which is equal to linked list. So this is going to be the final list, which is going to store the sum of P and Q. So we're going to basically add the numbers as we add them in the two linked lists to this sum list linked list. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through both of these lists and we're going to move on through keeping track of the carry if there is any. So let's go ahead and define a variable called carry which will initialize to zero and then we'll say while p or q we're going to move along in the list. So there's a few things here that we need to, to be wary of. In this case we have kind of a nice example since we have the same number of digits in each of these two lists. But what if we had something like this, where we have three digits in this first list and two digits here. So we would have 8 plus 5, again that's 13, uh, carry the one over here, 6 plus 4 plus 1, that's 11. So we carry the one over there, so this would be 3 plus 1, which is the carry, and then 4 down there. So it's actually 3 plus the carry plus nothing plus zero. So this is actually represented in the list as none. There's nothing there. But we want to say that if essentially if the node that we're on is none, then we want to represent that as a zero because that's how we do it in grade school addition. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of a check. We're going to say if not p, so if there is no, um, if that's null, we're going to say the number that we're adding at that point is zero. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent the numbers added on the first list with pointer p with i, and then I'm going to do the same thing with q, but I'm going to represent those with the variable j. So if not p, I'm gonna say i is equal to zero. Otherwise, if we don't have, uh, if it is not null, so in this case we have both of these, this one is not null, we're going to say, okay, then add the data element stored at the current location of the node that we're on that P is pointing to. So that means we're going to say I is equal to P.data. And then we're going to do the same exact thing for Q. So if not Q, we're going to say, let's in this case, a different uh, index variable, we're going to say J is equal to zero. And then otherwise, if Q is not none, we're going to uh, we're going to say j is equal to q dot data. And so then what we can do is we can say, let's say the sum, we'll call that s. We'll say s is equal to i plus j plus carry. So we haven't set carry yet. We will we'll, we initialize it up here, but we're going to keep track as we sum whether or not the carry variable is um, basically is, is one or zero. So we're going to check that now. So if s is greater than or equal to 10. What we're going to do is we're going to say carry is equal to 1. And then we're going to basically do a mod 10. So for instance, let's take it down here and look at this example again. So we have 8 plus 5, which remember was 13. So what, 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 do, we, what do we do here? We said 8 plus 5 was 13, so we put down a number here in the most right column, which was three. And then we added the one. So basically what we actually did was we took the remainder mod 10. So we said, okay, let give me the sum mod 10 and then put that down in the most right column. And then whatever the uh, carry is, which in this case is only gonna be one, move that over to the second column. So if S is greater than or equal to 10, our carry is of course going to be one because the most it can be is 18 we'd have 9 and 9. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say remainder is equal to s mod 10. And then we're going to say sum list dot append remainder. So we're going to add that onto the sum list. So otherwise, if we have a case where we don't have a remainder, so let's just put this, um, let's, let's imagine that this 8 was a 2 instead. So we have 5 plus 2. So that's going to give us 7. So there's no carry there. So that if check, if s is greater than or equal to 10 is going to fail. And basically what we're going to do there is we're going to say, okay, there's no carry. So carry is equal to zero. And we're going to just append on the sum of, in this case, five plus two. So we're going to say sum list dot append s. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move our nodes along in the list. So we're essentially going to move the node from 
from P in the first list onto the next one. Likewise, we're going to do the same with Q. So we want to be a little bit careful though, because if we have a case like this, again, where we have three digit linked list up here and a two digit one down here, if we say go to the next node here, well, this one doesn't have a next node, it just has null there. So we basically want to check if this thing does have a next node, then go to it. So if in this case, this one does have a next node, it's three. But in this case, it doesn't. So if it doesn't have a next node, then you know don't go to the next one. But if it does, carry on to the next node. So we'll go ahead and make that check there. So we'll say if p, so if p is not none, then go ahead and move along to the next node. And we'll do the same thing with q. So if q is there, go ahead and go on to the next node. And then what we'll do at the end of the while loop, once we've accumulated the sum of these things, is we'll say sum list dot uh, print list. So we can print out the list, which should be the sum of the two numbers, or of the two lists rather, that represent the numbers that we wish to sum. So let's go ahead and save this and run it and make sure that it works. Let's see, I'm getting some red there. Uh, I think it's because I spelled this wrong. So let's make sure that's spelled correctly. Okay, good. And then let me go ahead and run it. So indeed we have this 613, which is the, um, the print statement that I just said, print 365 plus 248. So it's just a very quick one-liner to validate that we get the right answer. And then indeed we have the linked list, which with the proper structure, with the three in the ones place, the one in the tens place, and the six in the hundreds place. So we have the correct linked list representation there. So let's just, um, it might be helpful to print some of these things out periodically as you're going along just to make sure you understand what's actually happening. So for instance, we have S is equal to I plus J plus carry. We can print out S here to kind of see what's happening. We can also say, let's just S colon and then convert this to a string just so we can print that out to the screen. Go ahead and run that. So we see that, again, this is just the initial print statement. We have S is initially equal to 13. That's where we had five plus eight. So that was the uh, number that we had. And then we had three in the rightmost column. One got carried over. Likewise, we had 11 because we had six plus four plus the carry of one that gave us 11. And then we had, in this case, three plus two plus the carry of one and that gave us six. So maybe if, if you're a little confused on some of these um, things and why they work. Print them out periodically to make sure that you understand why some of these things are operating as they are. Um, but that's pretty much all I'm going to do in this video. If there's any questions or comments on this method, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, as always, all the support, subscriptions, likes, comments are always very much appreciated. Uh, if there's any questions, again, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.